Now let's talk about the propagation constant and what it means and how you get it. The complex propagation constant gamma is made up of two parts. A real part, alpha, which is the attenuation constant, and an imaginary part, beta, which is the real part of the propagation constant. It can be calculated as a function of the R, L, G, C parameters of the transmission line, as well as the frequency. When you calculate this number, just run it through your calculator and take the square root. You're going to get a, a real part, alpha, plus j, and an imaginary part, beta. So literally, the real part is alpha, and the imaginary part is beta. Alpha is given in nepers per meter. Nepper doesn't really have a unit. It's N-E-P-R, it's a man's name, Mr. Nepper, divided per meter. Nepper doesn't really have a unit. It's the same thing as saying per meter. Beta has the units of radians per meter. Now the way we use this is when we have a wave propagating in the positive z direction, like this, that's the positive z direction, we can write the voltage as a function of z as its initial magnitude v0, that's its initial magnitude, going in the positive direction, e2 v minus gamma z. That's equal to v0 plus e2 v minus alpha plus j beta z. Let's break that into two parts. That is v0 plus e to the minus alpha z, e to the minus j beta z. Now what do each of these terms do? e to the minus alpha z is just a reduction in magnitude. There is no j in there. There's no phase shift. This is strictly a reduction in magnitude. Alpha is attenuation. If alpha is any number greater than zero, then this line is lossy, and the magnitude is going to decrease exponentially with time. Your book has a really good simulation of this, and I hope you'll take a look at it. What it means is as the wave propagates into the media, right here in the z direction, its magnitude is going to decrease as e to the minus alpha z. If alpha is small, the wave will not decrease very fast. If alpha is large, the wave will decrease faster and faster. So here is small alpha, small positive alpha, and here is large alpha. If alpha is equal to zero, the line is lossless. That means that the wave magnitude is going to stay the same the whole length of the line. There's not going to be any reduction and no attenuation. There is never a case where alpha is less, to z less than zero. In that case, the line would be an amplifier, and that doesn't happen for physical transmission lines. Now let's take a look at the e to the minus j beta z term. This is telling us about propagation. It's telling us about the phase and how the phase changes with distance. So remember that I had a wave that was propagating in the positive z direction. This minus j indicates the positive direction, positive z direction. And beta is telling me how fast it's changing. So I've got v of z is equal to v0, that's my initial magnitude, that's the magnitude of the wave that's propagating in the positive direction, e2, the minus alpha z, e2, the minus j, beta z. Now, let's go to the next case. Let's see what happens if we had a wave propagating in the negative direction. It's harder for me to draw that one, but this is the negative z direction, and a wave is propagating there. In that case, v of z propagating in the negative direction is v0, its initial magnitude, and that's the initial magnitude of the wave going in the negative direction. And that one is defined as e to the plus gamma z, not minus, plus. And in that case, that's going to be v0 minus e to the alpha z, e to the plus j beta z. Well, good heavens, what does this mean? It looks like the wave is getting larger as you move in the z direction, and in fact it is. Let's watch this wave propagate in the negative direction and see what happens if we had attenuation. Right? It would attenuate.